Today we are going to discuss approaches to development with special reference to theory of big push and critical minimum efforts theory. If a country is trapped in low equilibrium trap, how to raise economy out of that low equilibrium trap on the growth path is what normally is talked about when we talk about approaches to development. There are various theories which help us to find out how poorer countries should develop themselves. I will list some of the theories before I come to theory of big push and critical minimum effort theory because it will help you to understand how other approaches are being talked about by economists. So you might have heard about top down or trickle down approach which talks about development through large scale prestige projects. If you develop these large scale prestige projects, the benefits will trickle down in the long run to the grassroots and will help them achieving growth. You might also have heard about growth pole approach. This growth pole approach talks about development of a core region or growth pole which ultimately will lead to spread effects benefiting the country as a whole. The third approach is bottom up or grassroots developmental approach. The aim here is to lift people out of the poverty by helping them directly helping them to help themselves, involving themselves in local decision making. It is just opposite to top-down approach. From top-down approach, the planning is done at the top and then it is implemented at the bottom. And in bottom-up approach, the local players play an important role. Then we also have fair trade approach, an approach which joins consumers in richer countries with producers in poorer countries and creates a fair trading relationship. Then you also have regional development approach which focuses on developing the peripheral regions which have been left behind and making an attempt to, to reduce regional disparities. We also have export-led growth approach where we earn funds through export surpluses and use these funds for developmental activities in developing countries. Just opposite to export-led growth approach, we have import substitution approach whereby we try to produce products domestically and substitute imported goods by domestically produced goods. Then we have foreign direct investment approach where we invite foreign direct investment and FIIs to stimulate growth, particularly in extractive industries, high cost industries and high risk industries where local entrepreneurs are not coming forward. Then we also have Keynesian approach which says that increased use of government spending will help developing. Yeah, then we have Keynesian approach where it is said that state should take a proactive role by increasing government spending and help underdeveloped countries to achieve growth. Just opposite to this is new liberalism approach which says that rather than government taking a proactive role, it is it will be better private sector takes the lead. So basically free market mechanism and interventionist approach we are talking of. In free market viewpoint, spread effects of governmental spending will help promote growth. And in so free market versus interventionist approach, free market viewpoint says that spread effect will eventually benefit peripheral regions, while interventionist approach says development in de depressed regions need to be stimulated by government interventions. It will not come up automatically. The UN Millennium Development Goals, which were to be achieved by 2015, which talks about eight goals. Goal one, eradication of extreme hunger and poverty goal. Goal two, achieve universal primary education goal. Goal three, promote gender equality and empower women goal. Goal four, reduce child mortality goal. Goal five, improve maternal health goal. Goal six, combat HIV, AIDS, malaria and other diseases goal. Goal seven, ensure environmental sustainability and goal eight, develop a global partnership for development is also an approach for development. So 
there are so many approaches but we will not concentrate in these approaches we will only concentrate today on theory of big push and critical minimum effort approach closer panna bandho rosenstein roden ragnar nagse arthur lewis have propagated that underdeveloped countries should make simultaneous investment across all sectors and all regions of the economy if they want to promote developmental process they have said that developing countries and underdeveloped countries have low productivity which leads to low income low purchasing power limited size of market low inducement to invest even if population is high the low inducement to invest is a serious issue because large populations with empty pockets lead to low aggregate demand the theorists have said that if we would like to know why there is low productivity leading to low income and low purchasing power they have tried to explain low productivity with the help of low level of technology low capital intensity and the cover of limited size of market and inducement to invest as the basic region and they have propagated a theory which is known as the theory of big push the goal here is to take off as an aircraft runs on the runway very fast with full speed to take off similarly the economy requires a big push they have given an example of a stagnant wheel that if a wheel is stagnant it wants a big push so that it starts rotating and if a big push is given it will keep rotating for quite some time that is what is the theory behind big push investment in all sectors and all regions simultaneously is required because of the complementarities among the sectors and among the regions like in case of consumer goods and capital goods there is complementarity if you do not have capital goods you can't have consumption goods and if there are no consumption goods the people will remain poorer leading to low productivity low efficiency low incomes and less investable funds because of low savings and then you can't increase capital stock so there has to be horizontal balance and vertical balance amongst sectors and amongst regions roden stressed on three kinds of indivisibilities which are essential for eventually big push one is indivisibility of production function and second is indivisibility of demand and third is indivisibility of savings he says investment in social overhead capital rather in directly productive activities is what is required because if social overhead capital is created it will lead to increase in production economies of scale and externalities and also high production at lesser cost that will lead to development of a backward region so what is the theory the theory says that we must give a big push to a stagnant economy if we really want the economy to take off and to give big push huge doses of investments are required basically in social overhead capital infrastructure transportation communication core industries but all that glitters is not gold you might have heard it the critics say that if a country has so many resources available for all round investment in these countries then there is no problem of under development we are suggesting how under developed country can achieve development and the theory of big push is suggesting that we will have to undertake huge investments even at the cost of taking help from the external sector so that a minimum infrastructure is created which will help promoting growth the critics say that the countries have resource crunch and in case of resource crunch you are talking about how to use resources 
rather than generating resources. The other criticism of the theory is mere capital formation does not lead to growth. The idea propagated by the critics is skill formation is also necessary to promote growth. The theory, according to them, is a misplaced therapy. It is silent on the role of trade, role of skill formation, and they are also saying that if huge investments are taking place, especially in SOCs, social overhead capital, which are long gestation periods, which will give production after a long period of time, will it not lead to inflation? Because money would have been pumped out in the form of huge investments, while the production would not have generated. So there will be excess demand situation leading to prices going up. So what is the solution to this? So this is what is their criticism. And there, that is why they promoted the other theory, which is known as theory of prioritization, which is also known as theory of unbalanced growth, where they say that first things first, last things last should be the remedy for developing countries. And we have to case-wise discuss issues. We have to see which country is suffering with what problem, and then we have to provide piecemeal solutions. There cannot be same solutions to all countries. And they have said that if, if you prioritize and plan, and if you take up first things first and last things last, which will be through economic planning, that will be a better way of tackling the problem of underdevelopment rather than suggesting big push. The other theory which we are going to talk today is critical minimum effort theory. This theory starts with the proposition that every economy has two forces working simultaneously, shocks and stimulants. Shocks refer to those forces which reduce the level of output, income, employment and investment in an economy. They depress development, while the stimulants refer to those forces which raise the level of income, output, employment and investment, and they are income generating forces which lubricate the wheel of development. And once this lubrication takes place through multiplied effect, it has overall impact on the economy. As per the theory of critical minimum effort, a country is said to be underdeveloped if the impact of shocks is stronger than impact of stimulants. This theory was propagated by Levinstein. According to Levinstein, the generation of stimulant depends on attitudes, motivations, and incentives of the people. The main factor of development, according to him, are the entrepreneurs, the inventors, the discoverers, the innovators, and those who can accumulate and utilize wealth, and those who can accumulate skill and spread knowledge. So if we want a country to develop, then we have to strengthen the stimulant forces, and we have to weaken the shocks. This is the crux of this theory. To strengthen the stimulant forces, Levinstein classifies two types of incentives. And he says that these two types of incentives influence growth. One he calls zero-sum incentives, trading risk, non-trading of speculated activities, and transfer income from one section of people to another are zero-sum incentives. They have only distributive effect. They are carried on in order to secure greater monopolistic position, political power, and local prestige. They do not add to aggregate resources of national income. The other incentives are positive-sum incentives, which increase in production, investment, and which are helpful in promoting growth. 
they are growth stimulating factors. Levenstein is of the opinion that minimum effort should be made to create such a possible environment through expansion of minimum effort so that growth is stimulated and this can only be done when we provide positive some incentives in a nation. And for that stakeholders like state and citizenry are important. So they will have to work together, they will have to weaken shock forces and strengthen stimulant forces through critical minimum effort to promote growth. That is the theory of critical minimum effort theory.